water method again and remove all of that excess off. The next step is to remove the remaining crumbled mint sole still left on the rubber sole. So we're gonna pour them in boiling hot water and use a paint scraper to efficiently remove all of that crumbled mint sole. Don't worry, this is not going to enlarge the rubber soles, it will remain the same size. Now that we've removed the majority of that crumbled mint sole, it's time to remove the factory adhesive that is still left on the uppers and on the rubber sole. So to tackle this step, we're going to use a heat gun and cotton balls soaked in acetone to fully remove all of that factory adhesive. Using a Dremel tool only will ensure that our re-glue will be a lot stronger when we're re-gluing our rubber sole back to the midsole. Our next step will be to re-glue the rubber midsole back onto the donor midsole. But first we're gonna apply a thin layer of adhesive first, let that cure for a couple of hours, and then bond the midsole to the rubber sole by using a heat gun. But before we re-glue the donor midsole onto the rubber sole, we're going to need to apply a thin white film onto the rubber sole. This thin white film was removed in the process of removing the factory adhesive, so we're just recreating that thin white film to make the soles look milky. This step is only available for the Jordan 5s and Jordan 6s. All I basically do is pour a little bit of barge cement and then put some white paint and then mix it together. After that, I apply it on top of the rubber sole. I have yet to see anyone else do this. If you see anyone else do this, let them know where it came from. In order for our donor sole to fit proper, we're going to adjust the height of the midsole by shaving a little bit of that foam underneath where the rubber sole will be in contact. So before we re-glue the midsole back to the rubber sole, I'm gonna clean the rubber sole first. I'm not gonna use the rejuvenated cleaner because that shit is expensive. So instead, I'm only gonna be using dish soap which is perfect for this job. The only time I would be using rejuvenated cleaner is on delicate material such as suede or leather. The reason why I'm using dish soap instead of the rejuvenated cleaner is one, it's not necessary. But in return, I wouldn't use dish soap to clean suede or leather. Both soaps have different properties, which is why I would rather use dish soap to clean the rubber sole instead of the cleaner. Dish soap degreases while you clean, which is perfect for this job, and rejuvenator lubricates while you clean. By using the dish soap, we're removing the crud, the oil, the bacteria, all the dirt off of the rubber sole a lot more efficiently than the rejuvenator cleaner. That's the reason why when you wash your hands with dish soap, it feels squeaky clean, but if you wash your hands with car soap or laundry detergent, it feels really slippery. Each soap has a specific task, that's why not all soaps can do the same job. Now that the soles are squeaky clean, it's time to prep the midsoles for a re-glue. I applied tape on the areas I don't want my adhesive to get on, and then I just put on a thin layer of adhesive after that. To bond our midsole back to the rubber sole, we're gonna activate the adhesive by heating it up and then bonding them together, proving that it will be the best glue job you'll ever do. As you can see, there's still a gap on the midsole, so we're gonna use a Dremel tool to adjust the fitment. So we're gonna tape up the midsoles to prepare for the repaint. 
Also take notice that I'm not gonna be using the color Fire Red. I'm gonna be using the Collector's Edition Infrared because that matches the color from the 1999 midsole perfectly. <laughs> You can get these detailing brushes from the Angeles Direct website. I'll provide a link down in the description below. Now that the repaint is complete, we're gonna apply a coat of Quilon Matte Finisher to finish the job. We're almost done with the midsole swap. The next step would be to glue the midsole back to the uppers. I'm applying a thin layer of adhesive first, let that cure, and then after a couple of hours, we're gonna apply another layer of adhesive to have a stronger bond. Now that the adhesive is fully cured, we're gonna use a heat gun to activate the adhesive and then bond the uppers and the metal together. Our last step in this metal swap project is the toe gap restitch. I'm going to provide a link down below in the description on how to do a proper toe cap stitch. I'm just going to do a little bit of a touch up around the air unit where I need to paint the area black. Man, I had to trap, ain't had no job, shit but one. Been up about it since so 10, and I never gave up. Thank you guys for watching my video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. It means a lot to me seeing those numbers go up. If you guys are not subscribed already, might as well do it right now because hello, like this video is pretty dope and there'll be a lot more dope videos to come. So click that subscribe button. It's right below the red button that says subscribe. Also, if you guys need a discount on rejuvenator cleaning products, use my rep code Manalo, M-A-N-A-L-O. It'll give you 15 15% off on your total order at checkout. That's more than tax, so use it. If you guys have shoes for me to restore, my email is down in the description below, so hit me up. Make sure to add the name of the shoe, the size of the shoe, and your name on the subject title, and any detailed photos that you want me to see, any of the damages, please include everything for me to give you an accurate price quote. 
Again, my email is down in the description below, so please hit me up if you have anything that needs to be restored. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, if you have not already, subscribe. If you have not already, please give it a like. Thank you and God bless. Hey.